Well, 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 well. Battleground. Let's just say it was a battleground. And I hope from now on, every bad show is referred to as a battleground, because it was a battleground. This was a standard battleground. 2013, the pay-per-view wasn't good. It was fledgling, it replaced Over the Limit, and it was moved to October. So, it was just there to fill time and fill space, and we had the stupid ending of Big Show, KOing, you know, uh, Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton. 2014, John Cena wins, LOL, and retains the title with no uh, build-up to Brock Lesnar at Battleground. Nothing happened there. Then 2015 rolls around, and I'll get to the ending and the end of the show, but thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in uh, to another review of Code Breaker 146 and my pay-per-views, etc. So let's go ahead and get into it. Sheamus versus Randy Orton. Um... First off, we've seen this match over 50 times. We've seen encounters of these two tag teaming together. We've seen the same matches on SmackDown and Raw, and even on pay-per-views in 2010. And it's just, it's really annoying. And Debbie pretty much said, well, we've got Randy Orton here, the hometown man, the hometown boy of St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri. And then you have Sheamus over here, who's our big bad heel, and Vince McMahon loves Sheamus. And he has a huge wet dream of Sheamus becoming WWE World Champion. I do not get it whatsoever. So basically, we got Sheamus over here, we got Randy Orton over here. Let's put them in a feud together for the 50th time. And you know what? These two are going to go at it, and the fans are going to love it. That's not what happened. This match was another uninspired, not good whatsoever. We've seen the same exact match over like a five year period. A five year period. That's half a decade, ladies and gentlemen. And then, you know, from 2010, I get it, new things, Sheamus and Randy Orton. But when five years later, you got Sheamus and you got Randy Orton still facing each other in the opener of the show, a battleground, there's a problem. And it needs to stop. Randy Orton and Babyface go over here to open and kick off the show. You know, let's not put the tag titles to warm up the crowd or whatever and give something the crowd that will, like, sink their teeth into. Let's give Randy Orton. And then, granted, Randy Orton got one of the biggest pops of the night. And Randy Orton was getting the crowd, rama, you know, wound up when he had the, you know, getting ready for the RKO and stuff. Randy Orton won. Sheamus, once again, is just boring. And this match wasn't... It was about the same, Not, nothing great, and it was a bad choice for an opener, even though Randy Orton is the hometown man, and I understand that. Um, WWE Tag Team Championship match, Prime Time Players versus The New Day. Okay, so I have a, I, this match was solid. I enjoyed this match a lot more than I did at the Money in the Bank match, because I honestly was like, after Cena and Owens, I believe it was, um... I believe it was uh, the tag title match, if I can remember correctly. Then, like, I just literally just took a piss, and I came back. I literally came back, and the primetime players had won the title, so so I really didn't get to see much of that match. So we get over here to Battleground, and the New Day, I gotta say, are the most inter was my, one of the most entertaining points of the night, and they piqued my interest because Kobe Kingston's awesome. Okay, as a heel, he's great. He's very sarcastic and very fun. Xavier Woods is awesome. Okay, I love Xavier Woods, aka okay, Consequences Creed. Um, and Biddy's great as a heel as well. And all three of them together are just awesome. And then they're getting over with the fans. They get one of the biggest reactions of the night when the whole New Day sucks. Everyone chimes in. You know, everybody claps and stuff. And then they had the titles, and they were going on a huge run. They were gaining a lot of momentum. And then then WWE yanked the carpet away from them because they felt the primetime players as a babyface tag team needed the rub and needed to be tag champions. Tag team champions. I get it. You can have the primetime players be tag champions eventually, but do not do it at the expense of the New Day, which, in my opinion, is one of the best things going on in WWE today, and I love the New Day. But unfortunately, they lose again here. I don't get it why they did this, but anyway, primetime players have retained their tag team championship. The feud is over. New Day will not get the rematch for a very long time if they, um, you know, get back in the tag team title picture. So, the primetime players, I don't know who they're going to feud with going into SummerSlam. Next, we had Roman Reigns versus Bray Wyatt. 
Um, this match was actually, if I remember correctly, I labeled this the best match of the night. At three and a fourth, I gave this the best, three and a fourth or three and a half, I don't, I'm still debating over that, but that was the best match of the night. And that's not saying much. When your best match can't even crack the four-star mark as a pay-per-view, as a special event, that's bad. But this match was good. However, I don't want to see this feud continue. Okay, so we had... It is going to continue, obviously. But we have Bray Wyatt and Roman Reigns, who... I love Bray Wyatt. The guy has become stale. He's become boring. And Jerry has managed me to dislike Bray Wyatt because of that. And not gain any interest in from him whatsoever. And then there's Roman Reigns. And you guys know my feelings on Roman Reigns. But I really have started to enjoy Roman Reigns' work over the past couple of uh, weeks. And and I think Roman Reigns is really improving. But, you know, the mic work still needs improving. But I think in ring he's doing really good right now. And uh, the match was, a you know, a story-driven match. And it was really good. You know, Bray Wyatt was being Bray Wyatt. Roman Reigns was being Roman Reigns. It was really good. Um... And then Bray, and then freaking the finish. Um, Luke Harper as a security guard after Roman Reigns had thrown in four or five chairs in the ring in a regular singles match. Good call, Roman. Um, then we have Luke Harper super kick him as the ref is, you know, shoveling out the chairs from the ring. Uh, Wyatt puts him, and then gets put back in the ring. Wyatt, Sister Abigail, one, two, three. And so Harper is, I mean, I already, I saw, I could have seen it a mile away that it was going to be Luke freaking Harper. You know, um, unfortunately, Eric Rowan is not there, and this would have been a lot bigger payoff because now it's just Bray and Luke. I mean, maybe if you want to add the Ascension in there, pop them into the Wyatt family, new uh, members of the Wyatt family. Unfortunately, uh, Eric Rowan suffered an injury because I think Luke Harper and Eric Rowan were supposed to be tag team champions at this point because they were supposed to take the belts off the primetime players. Eric Rowan suffered a neck injury. He's going to be out to like January or something. But it, again, I mean, I think it's... I think it's good to put Harper back with Wyatt. I think it's necessary because, you know, um, Harper is floundering. I don't even know why they split up to begin with. You can do a payoff at the end, but there's no need to split them up, you know, at that point back when they did it around October after the whole Wyatt Jericho program ended. There's no point for it then. And now there's kind of no point for it now because now what do they do? Is it just Harper and Wyatt and just, you know, going around, Sister Abigail and super kicking people? I don't get it. Now this feud is going to continue. Roman Reigns will beat Bray Wyatt clean at um, SummerSlam. So this benefits no one. And when Wyatt's done, what is he going to do? Call out freaking, I don't know, uh, who? Randy Orton? Yeah, Ra he'll call out Randy Orton or Cesaro. I don't like you, man. You see, I don't understand. You know, you don't understand me, and I don't understand why all these people like you. So I'm going to attack you. And then when you beat me one or two times, I'm going to go away. That's exactly the epitome of a Bray Wyatt feud. I don't like you, man. It's exactly what it is. Anyway, uh, so we had this big thing where, uh, you know, the triple threat match for the Intercontinental Championship was canceled. Um, because Ryback um, suffered a staff infection injury, I believe, in his leg or something. I'm not sure. Um, he, he was given Z-Packs, and he was, um, he was fine. But, you know, I, because of that, we have... Um, you know, them going off of the Divas feud, and I was like, how do you ignore the Divas? Like, they are, they're one of the best parts of Raw, and you just ignored it. And then I realized, well, they're going to be doing a match. It was like, all of Team Bad, which is basically Sasha Banks, Naomi, and Tamina, versus Team Bella, versus the White Girls, I guess. Um, they all, you know, had to rep choose somebody as a representative in a triple threat match tonight. Charlotte, Sasha Banks, and Brie Bella was chosen um, and I honestly thought it was going to be Nikki, Charlotte, and Sasha, because I think on the priority list of WWE carrying, they could care less about Becky Lynch, to be honest. Um, they really like Charlotte because, obviously, Charlotte's getting huge pops at this current moment, and she's, you know, daughter of Ric Flair. Um, and then you got Sasha Banks, who's a very good heel, who will eventually turn into every single one of the divas, unfortunately. But so far, it's doing really good. Um, this, th they build this as this match was going to steal the show, and this is supposed to put every single WWE superstar, not, not divas, but superstars on notice. And what we got was not the show stealer, okay? And I don't care what any NXT smart is going to come on here and say, oh, that match was the best match of the night. Go back and watch 
Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch. Go back and watch the Fatal Four with Bailey, Charlotte, and Sasha, and you know Becky. You're, you're gonna say that, but really, it's not that. This just match wasn't good. They gave it time, but it just felt so sloppy. It felt like Brie wasn't even really involved. It was all about Charlotte and Sasha, and you can do Charlotte and Sasha on a big stage in the future, but I don't know. It just really wasn't working for me. And then it all went downhill when the Bella's botched catching Brie. And Brie almost like she broke her damn neck or something like that. It was it was not that great. Um, but this, I mean, this match was a good Divas match. This wasn't a good, um, like, match how they built it to be. That's how I kind of look at it. Um, but next, Charlotte picked up the win, by the way. Um, U.S. Championship match, John Cena versus Kevin Owens. You know what, I really would love to yell and to scream why this match is just so pointless, this feud was so pointless, and it was so stupid, that it would almost make my voice wear out, and I would vent my frustrations over to you where your ears would bleed. And it's sad, because Kevin Owens could not win. WWE once again missed the opportunity to make a new star, to make the brand new biggest freaking heel in their business. They shot themselves in the foot, and it's stupid. You have Kevin Owens, who's not scared of anybody, anyone. He'll fight anyone and everyone. And Kevin Owens is supposed to be this legit badass guy, and he's not supposed to be afraid of anyone. But guess what? They have him tap out to John Cena. No, 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 no. Not just four AAs would do it. Well, he got AA three times. But, you know, not just three AAs. You know, they could just do four AAs. I'm, you know, whatever. But they have Kevin Owens tap out. Now, that's just WWE saying this to the smarts. That's exactly what they're saying to the internet fans. And you know what? You know what? I think, I hope, WWE, I hope you get backlash on this. I hope that this makes SummerSlam one of the worst shows in history because I think you deserve, for everything that Cena and the crap that he's done over the past couple of years, I think everything that he has, you know, done, examples Wade Barrett, Ryback, Bray Wyatt, and now Kevin Owens has been fed to the Cena monster. That's four, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three, four. And right now, you want me to explain it in Spanish? Uno, dos, quite. Hold on. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. That's it, that's it, that's it, okay. I'm, I'm botching as much as John Cena does this um, springboard stunner. But nonetheless, um, Cena and Owens. This match, I don't care. This match was the exact same one as it was at the Chamber and Money in the Bank. Every Cena match is like that. The first match is always one of the better ones. Even though, in this case, Money in the Bank was better than the Elimination Chamber match. But it was almost the same thing, just with a two or three different new moves. Uh, Owens kicked out of three A's this time. Owens hit Cena with one pop-up powerbomb. Cena made Owens tap out. And don't even give me the crap. Oh, they made Owens look strong in his loss. Yeah, they made Wyatt look strong in his loss to John Cena at WrestleMania 30. And look at what, look what he's doing right now. So don't even give me that crap. And anybody's going to say that in the comment section below because that's just the stupid, stupidest excuse that people are going to give you. Oh, well, we made... Well, we made, you know, Kevin Owens look strong. He's still good. And, I, and I'm and i appalled that people allow this. And I know Vince McMahon makes the final decision, but for somebody to say, yeah, that's fine, Cena wins. Because there be, for some reason, Vince McMahon thinks that kids are going to shoot themselves in the freaking face if John Cena loses a pay-per-view match. They can't see behind the facade. They can't see behind the huge John Cena banner that's just standing right in front of everything and standing right in front of the path that they need to go on because people that are behind that path is guys like King Bear, guys like, you know, Ryback, you know, Bray Wyatt is a huge, you know, example. And, and then you've got now Kevin Owens. So I'm pretty sure Kevin Owens is going to face Dean Ambrose at SummerSlam and he'll probably job to Dean Ambrose and it really doesn't matter. And Owens won't and Owens can still be a big star. I, I don't believe his career is over, but it's so stupid. This is a complete waste of time, and then doing something different. And WWE, you th 
they make you believe that they're going to do something different with these guys that we really like, like a guy like Kevin Owens, like a guy like Bray Wyatt, any, anything like that. They make you think that we're gonna, they're going to do something different. You know, example, they had, you know, Wyatt go over um, Cena a lot in the, you know, beginning feud, and they made Cena look kind of weak until WrestleMania, obviously. And then they had Owens win the first match, and everybody was going crazy. And then they just, you know what, we're going to do what we always did. Cena's going to win, LOL. And I know a lot of more people are going to be upset than I am, but honestly, I, I thought everything would be okay. Because you still had room for improvement. You could have had Owens come out and cost Brock the title, make still having Brock as the number one babyface in all of WWE right now, have Owens and Brock at SummerSlam, you know, and then do have, have, have Brock and Lesnar go square off, and for some reason, you know, Brock is, Owens gets the best of Brock, and then Brock goes away until around Royal Rumble time, and he throws out Owens in the Royal Rumble, and then we have WrestleMania 32, Owens and Lesnar, this time a legit, straight up, no disqualification, bare bones, maybe even the last man standing match, Lesnar goes over at WrestleMania 32 and have Owens, you know, call him out and stuff, but no, we're not gonna do that. We'll just have Owen just lose, go fall into obscurity, and then do absolutely, absolutely nothing with him. Anyway, Miz got KO'd by Big Show, and that happened. That took about four minutes of time, I believe. I'm not even sure. I really just blinked and you missed it. Um, there were a championship match, Seth Rollins versus Brock Lesnar, a.k.a. squash match. 13 German suplexes, or 13 suplexes, shall I say. Brock hopped a barricade. Rollins got minimal offense in. Almost rarely anything. All I did was just hit him with kicks. Brock hit him with one at five. The lights went out. Undertaker came in and stared down Lesnar. Rollins disappeared. The mat the bell didn't even ring to say it was a disqualification. Undertaker low blowed Brock Lesnar. Undertaker choke slam Brock Lesnar. And Undertaker tombstone Brock Lesnar. Not once, but twice. That was the ending to Battleground. And this is what's going to make my review go over at least 20 minutes, probably. Unless I wrap this up and bring bring the, uh, the train in soon, because they could have done this where it would have been Brock and Taker with Brock still a heel, mind you. Still a heel. You know, and, and after he squashed the biggest baby face, John Cena, at SummerSlam, have, Bro have Undertaker do something to Brock, and it becomes WWE Championship match. Brock and Taker. Taker gets his revenge. He, um, as and he retires as the champion. He gets revenge on Brock, and then the title is vacated or something like that. No, we haven't faced Bray Wyatt, and Wyatt lost, mind you. Roman Reigns and Brock faced each other, and then at Battleground, Battleground of all places, not on a Raw. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's do Battleground. Let's do Battle. Oh man, I'll put different eyes. I'm gonna make this thing a legitimate show. Everybody's gonna be like, "That's the paper you Taker came back on." That's the pay-per-view that's good. No. No. No, 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 Taker comes out. Old Undertaker. 2015 Undertaker. And he was my favorite wrestler of all time. But it had no place here. Undertaker, the biggest babyface in wrestling history... You can argue anybody, but Undertaker is one of the biggest baby faces in wrestling history. And Brock Lesnar has one of the most undeniable face baby face turns I've ever seen. And and you have Brock squash now the biggest heel, Seth Rollins. And Taker comes out and low blows the man and then tombstones him twice. I get the whole initial Face off, having that epic moment where they both are staring at each other, and I get that. You wanted that derby as a big moment, you know, revenge for him in the streak. But really, did it belong here? Derby does this a lot with everything they do. They do a lot of short-term booking. They do a lot of short-term plans. 
Dean Ambrose is an example. They'll do short-term booking, but not knowing what to do. Bray Wyatt is a perfect example of short-term booking and, and you know, not knowing what to do with him at a later date. Um, they think that this is going to be good now, but who is going to win this match? Is... Is Brock going to win? Because that means Taker has lost all credibility as even a dominant force anymore. Then if we do Taker versus freaking Lesnar and Taker wins at SummerSlam and Taker versus Brock 2 in the PG era. Obviously it's, you know, was it in 2002, Unforgiven, and we had, you know, all that kind of good stuff. And no mercy. But then there's room for a rubber match. At WrestleMania 32, Undertaker's last two Raw versus Brock Lesnar. So we not, not only turned Brock, the, one of the biggest baby faces with the whole Suplex City stuff, and he's selling merchandise, and you know, and Brock, we turn him heel. We have Taker come back for no legitimate reason whatsoever, and now we're not going to get Taker versus Sting. So if anybody that really likes this, take a look at that, and tell me if you like it now. They're just so stupid. They don't know exactly what they're doing. They get so deep in their own BS that they think that it's great, but it's not. I don't care if Undertaker came back. I don't care if Undertaker... I wouldn't have cared if freaking... Oh, my God, man. It just does not make sense. And I'm struggling to come up with a logical thought of what I wouldn't have cared about. You know, sitting here at Battleground, but it just doesn't make sense. I wouldn't have cared if Sting came out and dropped Seth Rollins. Because they wouldn't know what to do long term. Sting might have won a Dirty World Championship from Seth Rollins or something. They wouldn't know what to do from then. Now who is Seth Rollins going to face at SummerSlam? Huh? I hope WWE does a lot of good thinking. You know on Raw and, like, answering the questions that I have, because it's just so stupid. This show was horrible, and I don't think there's any excuse for why this show even exists. Battleground, I hope you die a slow and painful death, and I hope this show is never viewed again because it is the po most pointless show ever. I'm done. Please comment down below. I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts um, about this. Thank you for letting me reach 805 subscribers. That is awesome, guys. Thank you so much, man. High five, man, woman, child, whoever's watching this video. High five. Um, but yeah, that's about it. This review was way too long. But I felt like it's necessary to vent my frustrations on Battleground. Battleground happened. Battleground.